In this lesson, we're going to talk about derivatives of trig functions. Um, and there's lots of applications with derivatives of trig functions. There is anything that oscillates, um, harmonic motion, there's sound waves and light waves, all kinds of applications in physics. Now, to start off with, we're just going to define the derivative of sine x and the derivative of cosine x. The derivative of sine x is cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So here are our derivatives. We're going to jump into some examples right here. It says, find the derivative of f of x, which is 5x to the third times sine x. So we have a product of two functions here. One of them is new to us, which is the trig function. Um, so I'm going to split this up into, um, we'll call it g of x. I'll say that's 5x to the third. And we'll use h of x for the other function, sine x. So the derivative of f is going to be using, we're going to find that using the product rule. So we're going to take the derivative of g times h plus the derivative of h times g. The derivative of g is 15x squared. And then when we multiply that by h, we get sine x plus when we take the derivative of h, which is sine x, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. And when we take that and multiply it by g, we get 5x to the third. There really isn't anything else we can do to simplify this. Um, there isn't any like terms or anything like that that we can add together. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. The next example, we will be using the quotient rule because we have cosine of x divided by 4x squared. So I'm going to define uh, cosine x, our numerator function, as we'll call it f of x. And our denominator function, I'll call it h of x. That will be 4x squared. So the derivative of g of x using the quotient rule is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the denominator function squared. So that will give us f prime which is a derivative of cosine, that's going to be negative sine x times our function h, which is 4x squared, minus the derivative of h, which would be 8x, times f, which is cosine x, all over the denominator function squared, which is 4x squared, and then raise that to the second power. Now, when we clean this up a little bit, this in the denominator becomes 16x to the fourth. And I can factor out a 4 and an x everywhere. So once I factor and um, cancel, what I'm going to be left with is negative x sine x minus 2 cosine x all over 4x to the third. Next example, it says a particle moves along a coordinate axis in such a way that its position at time t is given as the position function 2 sine t minus t 
and t is between 0 and 2 pi. At what times is the particle at rest? So when the particle is at rest, that means the velocity is 0. So what we want to do first is find the derivative of the position function, which would give us velocity, and we can set that equal to 0 and solve for t. That would give us the times that um, the velocity is 0. So I'm going to take the derivative of my position function, and I'm going to take the derivative of 2 sine t, since the derivative of sine is cosine, that's going to be 2 cosine t. And then when I take the derivative of minus t, that's just minus 1. So now I want to set this equal to 0 because I want to find where I want to find the value of t at what time is the velocity 0. So I have 0 is equal to 2 cosine t minus 1. So I have to solve this for t now. So we have to think back about solving trig equations. I'm going to add 1 to both sides and divide by 2. So I get that cosine of t is 1 half. And I want to think about where on the unit circle is cosine 1 half. So that would be my x coordinate. And I want to be specific. It says we're only doing this on the first rotation from 0 to 2 pi. So I only want to look at it in one rotation. Where is the cosine on the unit circle 1 half? So that would be at t equals pi over 3 and t equals 5 pi over 3. So this is where the particle is resting, where the velocity is 0. Now if you want to turn that into a decimal, that's fine. I think it's easier to just leave it without taking that extra step. Um, and it doesn't say what the units are in this question, so I'm just going to put um, generically unit of time. So it's going to be like seconds or minutes or something like that. Okay, now what I want to do with you here, someone discovered during some research that when they were looking at the slopes of the tangent lines of sine, and they plotted that on a graph, it looks suspiciously like cosine. And so after a lot of research, they discovered that the derivative of sine was in fact cosine x. And then that person did the same thing with cosine x. They studied the derivative of cosine x and verified after a lot of studying that it was the graph of minus sine x. It was, it looked very much like a reflection of the graph of sine x. So these two were initially developed and then from there, you can define all the other trig functions. All the other trig functions are based on sine and cosine. So for example, let's look at, what would be a good one to start off with? Probably tangent. Let's look at tangent x. We can rewrite tangent as um, the quotient between sine and cosine. So we have sine of x over cosine of x. So here's our function rewritten in terms of sine and cosine. Because we know the derivative of sine and cosine, we can use the quotient rule here to find what the derivative is of tangent. So if I find the derivative of sine x over cosine x, I'm going to use the quotient rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top function, which is cosine x, times the bottom function, which is cosine x, 
and I'm going to subtract the derivative of the denominator function, which would be cosine x, so the derivative of cosine x would be minus sine x, times the numerator function, which is sine x, and then this is all over the denominator function squared. So this is cosine squared. So here's the derivative of tangent. It's kind of messy, but watch what happens when we clean this up a little bit. If I have cosine x times cosine x, that's cosine squared x. I have a negative times a negative, that's gonna be a positive. And then sine times sine is sine squared. And then that's all over cosine squared x. And if we think back to our very basic identities, we know that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to one. So the derivative of tangent x is one over cosine squared x. And another way to write that, because cosine and secant are reciprocals, you can even write it more simply as secant squared x. So I'm going to write that the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. So I'll highlight this. So here's our derivative for tangent, all cleaned up. Okay, now let's do the same thing for cotangent. So we're going to find the derivative of cotangent. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm going to find the derivative of cosine x over sine x. So we're going to use the quotient rule. So we're going to take the derivative of the top, which is the derivative of cosine, that's negative sine x, times the bottom, which is sine x, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is cosine x, times the top, which is cosine x. And this is gonna be all over sine squared x because you take the denominator and you square it. Now, when we clean this up a little bit, I'm gonna get negative sine squared x minus cosine squared x all over sine squared x. If I factor out the negative one, I get negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x, which is one and that's all over sine squared x. And then we can write that as a reciprocal function as negative cosecant x squared. So the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared x. So there's our final answer for finding the derivative of cotangent. Now let's find our, let's do secant. We have secant and cosecant left. So if I rewrite secant in terms of sine and cosine, I would write it as one over cosine x because cosine and secant are reciprocals. So I wanna find the derivative of one over cosine x so again, I can use the quotient rule. So I take the derivative of the top, which is the derivative of one, which is zero, times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, times the top, all over the denominator squared. 
Zero times cosine makes that first term disappear. And then I get a negative, negative sine. So that gives me a positive sine over cosine squared x. And if I break this up, I could have sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. If I break that up, sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. So the derivative of secant is tangent times secant. Okay, last trig function that we're going to derive. Cosecant can be written as 1 over sine x. So we're going to find the derivative of 1 over sine x using the quotient rule. So we take the derivative of the top, which is 0, times the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, times the top, all over the denominator squared. And when I simplify that, the first term disappears because I have 0 times sine is 0. And then I'm left with minus cosine x over sine squared x, which I can write as negative cosine x over sine x times 1 over sine x. And then that gives us cotangent x times cosecant x. And then I don't want to forget that negative in front. So the derivative of cosecant x is negative cotangent x times cosecant x. So let's go on now to the next example. It says find the equation of a line tangent to the graph of f of x equals cotangent x at the point x equals pi over 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the derivative. So I know that the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x because we just derived that. And now if I go ahead and evaluate that at pi over 4, we're going to get that negative cosecant of pi over 4 and then square it is going to give me a negative 2. So I know that the slope of the tangent line is going to be negative 2. So now I'm going to plug that into my mx plus b form. And now I need to plug in a point for x and y um, so that I can solve this for b. Since I know my x coordinate at the point on the curve where the tangent line touches, I know that x value is pi over 4. So I'm going to put in pi over 4 for x. Now, if I plug in pi over 4 in for cotangent to find the corresponding y value, so I'm going to take pi over 4, plug it into cotangent, and my corresponding y value is going to be 1. So I'm going to plug in pi over 4 for x and 1 for y. And what's going to end up happening is I'm going to get B is going to be, uh, let's see, if I take negative 2 times pi over 4, that gives me a negative pi over 2. And then I have to add pi over 2 to both sides. So I'm going to get 1 plus pi over 2. Now, if you want, you can put that in decimal form, but I'm just going to leave it as exact. So my line is going to be, now that I have my slope and my value of b, is going to be negative 2x, and then plus, and then my value of b is going to be 1 plus pi over 2. So here's my m, here's my b, 
And if I look at the graph of cotangent X, the line that touches just at that one point on that curve at X equals pi over four, this will be the line that does that. Okay, the next example says find the derivative of the function cosecant x plus x times tangent x. So this is fine when I take the derivative of this term, but when I look at the derivative of this term, I have the product rule, so I have to keep that in mind. So the derivative of f when I take the derivative of cosecant of x, I know that derivative is negative cosecant x times tangent x plus, now I have to do the product rule to find the derivative of the second term, which is x tangent x. So I'm gonna take the derivative of the first function. So x I'm gonna say is the first function and tangent is the second function. So I'm gonna take the derivative of x, which is one, times tangent, plus the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared x, times the first. So here is what I get when I use the product rule from the second term. Let me color code this. So here's the derivative of the second term. Here's the derivative of the first term. And this one here, we needed to use the product rule. Um, and I really don't see anything that we can do to combine like terms. Um, other than just dropping the one in front of the tangent, there really isn't anything we can do to clean this up. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Okay, next example, it says find the first four derivatives of y equals sine x, and we're gonna find the pattern. You're gonna realize with sine x and cosine x, there's a pattern that makes it really easy to find higher order derivatives. So if I let y be sine x, to find the derivative, the first derivative of sine x, that is going to be cosine x. Then when I take the second derivative, the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So when I take the derivative of cosine x, I'm going to get negative sine x. When I take the third derivative, if I find the derivative of sine x, x cosine x, and when I multiply that by negative one, that gives me negative cosine x. And then the fourth derivative, if I take the derivative of negative cosine x, that's negative negative sine x, which is positive sine x, and we start over. So if you notice, the pattern will repeat every fourth derivative. So if I then start again, the fifth derivative will be cosine x. And then the pattern will just keep repeating. So you can use this to figure out, for example, what is the 12th derivative of sine x? The 12th derivative would be a multiple of four. So you're gonna end up with sine x. And you can do the same with cosine. Cosine has a similar pattern.
So if you find, if I let, I'll call this um, F I'll call this function f, x cosine x. So f prime would be negative sine x. f double prime would be negative cosine x. f triple prime would be sine x. The fourth derivative would be then cosine x and it starts to repeat again. Okay, last example, it says an application to acceleration. A particle moves along a coordinate axis in such a way that its position at time t is given by two minus sine t. We're gonna find the velocity at pi over four and we're gonna find the acceleration at pi over four and we're gonna compare these values to decide whether or not the particle is speeding up or slowing down. So if I find the derivative of s prime of my position function, that's gonna give me my velocity. And when I take the derivative of two, it just disappears because it's a constant. And then when I take the derivative of negative sine t, that's going to give me a negative cosine t. And then I want to find the velocity at pi over 4. At pi over 4, when I plug that in for cosine, the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And then I have that negative in front. So this tells me... Um, that the velocity has changed direction since it started. Now I'm gonna find the derivative of the velocity and find the acceleration. Um, let's see, so if I find the derivative of the velocity, that's negative cosine t, and the derivative of negative cosine would give me positive sine, so that gives me sine t. And now when I plug in pi over four of sine t, I get the square root of two over two, which is positive. So this is negative, this is positive. And if we recall, if the velocity and the acceleration are opposite signs, that means the object is slowing down. If they were the both, if they were both the same sign, like they were both negative or they were both positive, that means they're both moving in the same direction so that the object is gaining speed rather than slowing down.